Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Penfield and Bagley, which is the world that we got from the expansion pack of Sims 4 Cottage Living. And I'm going to be building a Generations family cottage using custom content. So this house ends up having four bedrooms and two bathrooms and it's built on a 30 by 20 lot. And like I just said, I'm building it using custom content, which I feel like it's been some time since I last did my CC build. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know this, but I like doing CC builds. If anything, they're some of my favorite things to build, but I like to space them out just because I understand that not everyone can download custom content. If you're someone that plays on console, you can't download it. And so I only like to do them every so often, but it's been several months since my last one. And so this week I thought, why not build using custom content, but why not build something that I haven't built so far using CC? And that's kind of like a, a generations family cottage. Now the inside of this house ends up being so homey, just so comfortable looking. And I think it might be my favorite CC build that I've done to date. And so, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So I hope you guys like it, but anyway, getting on and actually talking a little bit more about the build. So where I was building the world of Henry and Bagley, I wanted to build something that felt a little bit more like it belonged in the Cotswolds because if you're not familiar the world of Henfield and Bugley that we got from the Cottage Living Expansion Pack was actually inspired like the whole world inspired by the area of the UK that is the Cotswolds and so basically I wanted it to feel like this cottage you could find in the UK somewhere like down a little street or maybe down like a little country road. Now I was looking at a picture when I was building this. I'll find the picture and I'll pop it up on the screen now so you can have a little look. Now you're probably looking at the picture and thinking Jess that looks absolutely nothing like the build that we've got in the game that is on my screen right now and to be honest I didn't really end up using it that much as a reference picture. It was more so something that I saw on Pinterest. I really liked the look of it. I fancied building something very similar to it. Like I said, I wanted to build something with CC that was a little bit more of like a Cotswolds cottage. And so instead of trying to basically replicate it, I just took elements from it. One of the things that I tried to kind of implement into this build that I saw in the picture was a little front door area. So if you was to look at the picture, it's kind of got this little blue front door. And so I thought I'd do the same thing in this build. I feel like I'm a bit boring to be honest, when it comes around to front doors, because I've realized I don't really experiment with front door colors. Normally I just go for brown, black or white. So maybe this just due to the fact of, we haven't really got that many colorful, nice door swatches in The Sims 4 without custom content. But yeah, I never really experiment with front door colors, but I thought why not do it in this build, make it look a little bit like the picture because the actual structure of the build looks absolutely nothing like it. But then another thing I decided to take from the picture was all of this ivy on the side of the house. Now, when I was building this, I really wanted it to feel like it was this little Cotswell cottage secluded in the countryside. It's probably donkey's years old. It's a bit overgrown. It probably needs a gardener or two just to kind of like maintain it. But it's got all this ivy growing up here. And if you actually look at the, the initial structure of the house, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, you can probably already tell, it's not exactly the most interesting shape. It's pretty much just a square and it's got loads of different square bump outs, or is it more of a rectangle? It's, it's in, I think it's more of a rectangle actually now looking at it, but it's pretty much just a shape and it's got these other shapes coming off it, but the front of the building is quite flat. And so adding all these different pieces of ivy all around just makes it a little bit more interesting. It gives it a little bit more oomph, even though that's not really a describing word, but I'm going to use it. Do you know what I mean? Like it gives it a little bit more character. It's probably a better word than oomph, but yeah, I added all this ivy around the front of the build, around the back of the build. You don't see me actually add it to the back of the build just because when it came around to the landscape in the back, I did decide to cut it out just because I didn't want to make this video any, any longer than what it needed to be. And the, that back garden ivy and landscaping is very similar to the front garden. So I did decide to cut it out, but Anyway, moving on and actually talking about what I'm doing right now and also telling you where all the different windows and doors are from because I'm going to try and remember where everything is from. And if I manage to pull this out of the bag and get all of this correct, then I'm actually quite proud of myself because I use a lot of CC in this build and I'm going to try and tell you where different bits and bobs are from. Not every single object that I place because I'll be here till next week. But in terms of like the core things of the build or like things that stand out to me, I'll try and remember where they're from. And if I say somewhere and it's not actually the exact set from that creator or it's not 
that exact creator. I will put a bit of text on the screen, but I feel pretty confident in my knowledge of my CC folder. <laughs> so if you are curious, the all of the doors and the windows, and I believe the wallpapering, and then the roof pattern as well, is all by Felix Andre and Hey Harry, and it's from their organic set. Now, that CC pack is one of my absolute favourites. I love it so much. I consistently use it in my own personal gameplay, in my own personal builds for my, my Sims, consistently use it. It's just so... It's just so beautiful. Like there isn't enough words to describe how good that CC pack is. But in actual matter of fact, all of the CC that I've used is just absolutely just chef's kiss. I just love playing and building with CC so much because you can really get into the nitty gritty details with CC and you can really just make something a little bit more to your sims into a little bit more of a character but yeah if you are wondering all of the doors and the windows are from the organic set the shutters that i've actually placed down onto the individual windows i believe they are from at felix andre themselves and it's from the jordan set now this is probably my 112th i don't know why i said 112 just a random number but this is one of the many reasons why i love cc so much because i've used a different front door to shutters like they're from completely different cc packs but they match. Do you know how much I appreciate that? Do you know, I really wish the Sims team would really just take a leaf out of CC Creators books because the amount of times I've placed down an object into the game that's come from the actual base game itself and it's not custom content or like just from a DLC. And the Sims team love to give us all these beautiful swatches and fern and don't get me wrong, absolutely love them to pieces. But sometimes they'll give us things and then there won't be anything to kind of go along with it. And so then if you, it's it's just difficult to use. The fact that I've used two different packs for the exterior, like the front door and the shutters, and they match. It's probably, in all fairness, it is probably down to the fact of Felix Andre is also one of the creators of the organic set where the front door is from. But just the fact of they're carrying different swatches from their different packs, it just makes all of their items so much more usable. And it's just, and it's not even just with them two creators themselves. I find that a lot of the CC that I have in my game, I often find different furniture swatches that can match with other different CC creators stuff. And that it's just something which, I mean, why can this? Why can CC creators do it, not the actual Sims team? Do you know what I mean? Like, why? Why can't they just follow along? But yeah, the shutters themselves are from the Georgian set, and then you might notice as well. I actually went around and placed some individual stones onto some of the corners and edges of the build. Again, going back to the actual structure of this house, it's quite, it's quite boring. It's pretty much just like a rectangle, and it's got a few bump outs. The ivy really helped give it a little bit more character. But then also finding these individual little stone pieces, which are from the organic set. Again, I pretty much, I think, ended up using the majority of the organic set within this build somewhere. Not in case of like the the actual build stuff, but in the case of all the different furniture pieces, all the different buy stuff. I'm pretty sure I plopped down at something from that pack everywhere within this build but the little little stone pieces on the corner again it just makes it gives it a little more a little bit more oomph but anyway moving on and actually getting back to talking about what i'm doing right now so as you can see i just finished up the front garden and now i've moved on into the back garden you might have noticed in the front garden they end up being kind of like a little vegetable patch now originally i was thinking about placing down a garage there but then i was looking at it and i was thinking am i going to place down a garage just for the fact of to spit out the empty space didn't really know what else to do with it what's actually going to be on the inside of the garage that's going to be that interesting for gameplay and so i thought do you know what i'm going to scrap the idea i'm going to build a little tiny vegetable patch as i am building it on 30 by 20 it's one of the ones that is longer width ways than it is back to front i spoke about this actually fairly recently in one of my previous builds when i did a tudor family home in the world of windenburg but i really struggle on building on lot sizes that are bigger width ways than length ways and so when it comes around to the garden i always feel like they i have a bit of a hard time basically when it comes around to doing the back gardens and often I, I struggle in terms of finding what to place down into it to make it feel like it's not too crumped in and so I decided to basically extend the back garden onto the front garden it kind of like transitions around this little alleyway and we've got a little vegetable patch but now as you can see I've moved on into the back garden I've already placed down one of my favorite pieces of CC which I'm not sure if it's a CC piece or if it's a mod it's kind of like a beautiful combination of the both you might have seen it it's this little slide now this is by Ravashin I use this, I'm not joking, in every single one of my personal gameplay households that have got kids, it's in their garden somewhere, because it's a functional object, the kids can actually start in it, do you know, I absolutely love CC, and I absolutely love CC creators, they're so smart, why have we not got something like that in the actual Sims 4 base game, I mean, I understand, it's actually probably, I say actually probably, it's it's most definitely a very difficult thing to create for the Sims team to actually do. And I know that they have like tight schedules and there's only a certain amount of items that can go into certain different CLCs and stuff. But we've got the toddler stuff pack 
many years ago now. I don't know how long we've had that in our games, but the toddler stuff pack does actually have a little tiny slide, but only toddlers can use it. I'd love if they could just reuse the animation and just give us a little bit of a bigger slide because, I mean, Ravishing managed to do it. Ravishing is one of my absolute all-time favourite CC and mod creators. Bit of a combination of both. Again, their stuff is just a staple within my game and also I do want to mention I probably already should have mentioned this but if you are wondering and if you're worried I'm going to be linking absolutely everything in the description box of this video if you want to download all the CC that you're going to see I think the way that I'm going to do it is the same way that I've done it for my previous two CC builds and that is instead of placing down all the different individual links into the description box I'm going to link you to a Google Doc link and then that way on the Google Doc link everything's going to be there because sometimes I find it's a little bit overpowering when you've got like 20 30 different links i don't even know how many different links that there's going to be but when there's a lot of different links in the description box it can look really crowded and just it can sometimes be a little bit overpowering for my eyes anyway and so i'm going to link you to a google doc link that way it's easier and then you can go on to the link itself you can see the creator you can see where you can support them you can see where you can actually download their stuff and then i'll then link all the different individual like cc packs that they've used that they've used that i've used that they've created or like the individual like standalone items that way it's just i personally find it much more easier and just a little bit more of a i don't want to say a better experience when you download and cc but it's just it's just easier i personally prefer that method anyway and also i think the way that i'm going to do it i did this in my last cc build and i think you guys actually appreciated it in my last cc build i used a lot of cc like this build but what i did is the cc build that i did before that i basically linked all the different previous stuff that i've I've used in my previous builds because if you're someone that likes to maybe download all the CC that I use whenever I do do CC builds I know that sometimes and I've definitely done it a few times before I've downloaded the same sets or same bits of custom content that I've already got into my game because I wasn't sure if I've got it and so what I'm going to do on the Google Drive link is I'm going to make a little key and then if I've used something in my previous CC build which was a huge family home in Newcrest I'll highlight it a certain colour don't know what the colour is going to be yet maybe like pink or blue or something but if it's highlighted then that means that I've already previously linked to it from my previous CC build hopefully that's easy to follow but I'll put a little I'll put like a little description in the Google Doc link and I'll also give you like a little key so it's easier to follow along with but I find that is the easiest way to download CC for me personally anyway but yeah anyway getting back to it so as you can see I just finished up the back garden the back garden ended up having like a little patio table it had a little tea set on it the tea set is actually new in my own personal gameplay I recently downloaded it it's been out for a while but I don't know how I managed to skip it but it is by the it's the cold brew set which is by Pierre Sim now I previously had I say previously, I've got all of their stuff in my game. I don't actually know how I managed to miss that one, but I previously found it because I was looking for a floral wallpaper in my own personal gameplay because I'm not going to go around the houses, but I, I was doing a brownstone apartment and I wanted to have like a floral wallpaper to kind of match with my, my Sims personality. And then I found this really nice one that is from the Colbury set, but it's part two. And so I downloaded it and it comes with some beautiful like little tea sets with like a little sugar little bowl and little individual cups i use that set a few times within this build but also you would have seen i did like a little outside seating area i think the the set that i use is winter garden which i believe again is by pierre sim it basically just ends up being like a little seating area it's got a three-seater sofa a two-seater sofa and then a really interesting circular armchair which is just I've never seen anything like it. I love it. But I also cluttered up the, the individual like sofas and the armchair with loads of different pillows and blankets. And again, this is like my, what are we on now? Like 113th reason why I love custom content so much. We've actually got individual pillows and blankets and just stuff to make its places look a little bit more comfortable. So on the inside of this house, you'll notice there ends up being so many different like armchairs or beds or just places where you would sit down quite comfortably. And they are just filled with pillows and blankets just to make it feel a little bit more comfortable a little bit more welcoming a little bit more homey that is a great action that is a great way to describe the inside of this house for me anyway personally it just feels so homey and wholesome and country like and just i've really tried to make it feel as much like a cotswolds cottage as i could possible because i mean it just it's just beautiful it's very much given me the holiday you know the holiday the christmas film very much wanted to go for like that kind of like warm inside feeling even though it looks absolutely nothing like the holiday house from that film which i actually recently found out it's actually a fake house i actually can't believe that i thought it was a real house but that's completely off subject <laughs> completely besides the point 
getting back to the build and actually getting back to talking about what I'm doing right now. So as you can see, I've now moved on into the inside. I just quickly do the little entrance hallway. In the entrance hallway, there ends up being like a little coat rack, a little tiny bench, again, with some pillows and blankets, and there ends up being like a little side table. But now I've moved on into possibly one of my favorite rooms that I think I've ever furnished, ever, in a few years of building The Sims 4, the kitchen. I was about to say kitchen and dining room. It's kind of like a kitchen, also hallway space into the dining room. I am so, honestly, I am so obsessed with this room and the way it ends up turning out. And just the lighting as well. I mean, you can already see in the other side of the room, the way that the lighting just comes down onto the floor and then I end up placing down like a really beautiful rug there, some little armchairs, just... I am so in love with this kitchen. But if you're wondering, the counters that I'm using are by Felix Andre, and I believe they are from the London set. I think I might have possibly used these in, maybe not my last previous build, because I remember I did quite a modern kitchen in my last previous CC build, but maybe one of the Parisian apartments, because if you're not aware, previously when I've done a CC build, I actually built a Parisian apartment like block building, and they ended up being like a bakery and a patisserie in the downstairs, but then they ended up being at three separate apartments in the upstairs level. I'm pretty sure I've used these counters in one of them apartments before but they are some of my all-time favorite kitchen counters to use but I decided to actually go for the fruit that we've got from the cottage living expansion pack now I've said this a few times whenever I do do CC builds but whenever I do build with custom content I do try and minimize the amount of paid DLC content that I use in my builds because I personally whenever I'm building with custom content sounds bad but I kind of forget that we've actually got stuff within the actual game itself like from different expansion packs just because CC is so good and I love it so much and so whenever I do do a CC build I really just try and take full advantage of all the different bits and pieces and all the Either, all the bits and bobs that I've got of CC and put them into a build and I've rarely ever used like paid DLC stuff but when it came round to doing the kitchen for this house I found the cottage living fridge kind of matched with it quite nicely I'm not sure what how many like different paid DLC packs that I use within this build. I'm gonna do what I've done for my previous C builds again within this video and I'm gonna tell you all the different individual packs that I've used in the description box but then what I'm gonna do is in brackets I'm gonna put the amount of items that I use from that pack just because when it does come around to doing CC builds I really do just try and prioritize all the different custom content that I've got rather than the paid DLC stuff but sometimes the paid DLC stuff does creep in but it might be in like small little increments. So say for example, I might have used the Cottage Living Expansion Pack and so I might have wrote that in the description box, but then it might just literally just be the case of, I've just used one item, which would be the fridge. And then when it comes around to downloading it, if you don't have that expansion pack, it's literally just one item and then you can just replace it with something else. I feel like that's a lot easier as well. And it's something that I like to do in my CC builds because I find that when sometimes I list off all the different packs and then I've got all these different CC links as well, it can be a little bit intimidating, but sometimes it's literally just a matter of, I might have just used like a clutter piece or like one individual furniture item from that pack. And then if you don't have it, it's like not the end of the world kind of thing. But yeah, I will link it all or like I'll write it all in the description box down below if you are curious. But I feel like as well, if you are someone that's recently got into the sims 4 maybe you just recently downloaded it as the sims 4 is now a free to play game sims 4 custom content builds really handy because a lot of times cc creators will either create their own standalone meshes or they'll use like a base game item to create a mesh off and then a lot of time all this stuff doesn't really require many dlcs itself so if you are someone that's recently gotten into the sims 4 maybe you just recently downloaded it honestly i would look into downloading some cc because you're gonna have a you're gonna have a great time let me tell you that one for free but yeah anyway getting back to the kitchen so i used the cottage living fridge and then i actually found this little tiny coffee machine which i believe the one that i've used is from my cup of cc and it looked like it was a matching coffee machine to the fridge i've said this a few times before but the cottage living fridge really does resemble a smeg fridge in real life to me and i've again said this before but one of the things that i've really aimed to have in life is a smeg fridge in my in my dream kitchen just because they're just lovely. I just love the look of them. And also in real life, you can get like smeg kettles and toasters and stuff. And I actually found some CC that kind of matches it. So I placed down the little like coffee espresso maker, which I believe the one that I placed down is from My Cup of CC. And there was also a little individual toaster, which unfortunately it does not work. It's just like a clutter piece. But I place it down next to the fridge and it looks like it's from the same kind of like kitchen collection. I just love the little bits and pieces that you can really get into with CC. But as well as that in the kitchen, that ends up being like a breakfast bar. There ends up being a sink on there. I end up placing down like some plants. I think just some general like clutter bits and pieces. I know I place down some like individual tea towels, which 
why don't we have tea towels? And they go, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just things like this. There was also a butter dish, which I absolutely love. The butter dish itself is by Max 20, if you are curious, but it's just a small little intricate details of things that we have. You know, I was about to say, I just don't have a butter dish myself, but I just use a tub that you buy from the shop. But people, some people do have a butter dish and I love that and I love the clutter of it. And so I place it down onto the little breakfast bar area. And then the other side of the room, originally when I was doing the floor plan, I was thinking, oh, it'd be lovely to have like a really nice big sofa here maybe someone's cooking in the kitchen and then the rest of the family comes in has a bit of a chit chat and they can just sit on the sofa but then when it actually came round to actually working out the placement of the items there wasn't really enough space to have a sofa to make it not look cramped because i could have probably placed one down but it just would have looked a little bit too tight and so i ended up placing down two little armchairs and then also like a little table in between them i placed down like some little cups to make it look like maybe someone's having like a cup of tea cup of coffee or something but then you would have just seen me quickly just do the little dining room now i think one of the contributing factors for the kitchen hallway space into the dining room being one of my favourite rooms, if not my favourite room that I've ever decorated in The Sims 4 before, comes down to, I use these doors, which are from a Berlin set by Felix Andre, but I use one door which is closed and then one door that is open. It's such a small thing. It feels so realistic to me. In real life, downstairs, upstairs, wherever you are, if you've got a kitchen door, do you actually keep it closed? I don't, my kitchen door is perfect. I don't think I've ever seen my kitchen door closed. It's just small little details like that, which I just love with CC. And so I found these doors and I placed them down side by side and they kind of look like someone's opened one of the doors, hasn't shut it yet. The other one's still closed, but you can see what it would look like when it's closed. It really honestly does come down to the final details for me because it's such a small thing. It's literally just a door, but it's a door which looks like it's a bit more realistic than a shut door. I just like it. But anyway, in the dining room, you will see I place down the circular table in the middle, which I believe the table itself is by Felix Andre. And then the chairs that are paired with it are from the organic set, which is by Felix Andre and Hey Harry. And then it was quite a small little tight space, ended up being basically just a room. Your Sims can go in there, eat their breakfast, eat their dinner, eat their lunch, whatever they're eating, and maybe just have a snack in there. It also ends up being a bit of like a china cabinet at the back, which I was originally going to use a different china cabinet, like shelving unit, but then I actually found a different one which i believe the one that i end up using in that room is by felix andre and it's from the london set so it kind of matches with the kitchen counters and it kind of looks a little bit seamless like the seamless transition from the kitchen to the dining room that sounds really formal um, i don't even mean to sound formal there but it just matches it looks like whoever built this house just used the same furniture pieces but now as you can see i've now moved on into this is actually a hallway space but originally it was going to be just a bit of a walkway for your sims to come from the kitchen and then go outside into the garden but then I actually realized it was quite a big space when it came around to furnishing and I didn't initially know what I was going to put in it so then I decided to make it into a little bit of a home office I rarely ever make home offices or like study spaces in hallways but I mean it worked out really nicely I ended up using this desk which is from Charlie Pancakes honestly my favorite desk that has probably ever existed in terms of custom content I use this consistently if you've ever seen any of my previous CC builds nine times out of ten or actually no ten times out of ten that desk is in the build somewhere just because it's just so cute. It looks like one of them tables that you would have in like a hallway space, but then you can actually like fold it down and then you can make it into a little bit of a desk. And so I use that in there. And then I also use a little computer desk, also put like a little filing cabinet decoration thing behind it. I also found a printer, which I believe the printer itself is part of the Oak House collection, which is by Piero Sim. And then I also place it down on like a little side table that ends up being like a little bookcase in there, which the bookcase itself, Right, I recently downloaded the Lighthouse Collection, which is by Charlie Pancakes. Absolutely beautiful. I use it so much within this build. You would have seen, I actually placed down a bunch of paintings above the desk area. Them paintings, you're going to see a few times in this build because I'm absolutely obsessed with them. They are by Charlie Pancakes from the Lighthouse Collection. Fairly new in my game. And so because it's kind of like a new shiny item, I used it quite a lot within this build. But it's just just so beautiful but now as you would have seen i just quickly furnished one of the hallways that was just kind of like a hallway space connecting in the kind of like entrance hallway entrance corridor from where your sims walking through the front door from the kitchen to the lounge space it's just kind of like a little little i was about to say alleyway it's not yeah you could use an inside alleyway if you want to put it that way but now as you can see i've now moved on into one of the bathrooms quickly though before i talk about this bathroom can we talk about the clock that i placed down into the hallway 
just outside of this room. In case you did miss it, I'm pretty sure I'll spin the camera around in like a second or two and you might be able to see it in the top left corner. But failing that, I do end up using it on the upstairs portion of this house as well because I am just so in love with this clock. Honestly, didn't even know I had it in my game until it came around and I was furnishing the inside of this house. The way that I could describe it, if you didn't manage to catch it, is basically if I could put this house into one single item and it, which would perfectly describe this house, it will be that clock. That sounds like a really strange way to describe it, but if you actually see the clock, it just fits the house completely. It is just so perfect. It just fits the whole countryside living, Cotswold Cottage, cosy, wholesome vibe. And it comes in the same swatch as the kitchen counters. And it's by a different CC creator, which I don't think I mentioned. It's by Peacemaker, but it's just it's just so perfect. I am absolutely obsessed with it. But again, if you didn't manage to catch it when I did the little hallway space, you'll see it on the upstairs portion of this build. But I was just so happy when I saw it. I'm just, I'm so in love with that clock. And the fact that it just matches the kitchen to a T. Like, it's literally the exact same swatch, pretty much. I mean, what else could you actually ask for? But... Anyway, besides the point, as you can see, I'm now just going around and just decorating the inside of this little bathroom, also utility room space. Now, I normally only ever show the furnishing for one bathrooms in my houses, just because they're a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive. It's only so many times that I can place down a toilet or a sink or a bathtub or whatever it is, and it to be interesting. And so I normally only ever show the furnishing for one, but where it did end up being a bit of a utility room space, I decided to keep the footage in. The counters I ended up using in that room, I'm pretty sure I'd buy a Harry and they're from the Country Kitchen collection, I'm pretty sure. Again, if I'm incorrect about any of these different like creators and their individual packs that I've used, I'll put a bit of text on the screen, but I'm pretty sure they are from the Country Kitchen set, which actually, Harry had the Country Kitchen set before we got the Country Kitchen kit. That is really difficult to say fast, but either way, besides the point, in there, there ended up being a washing machine, a tumble dryer, also ended up being a bathtub. I was debating putting down a shower, but then I was thinking, well, this is on the downstairs portion of the house. I was imagining that the Sims family that was going to live here would have a dog, and normally when you take a dog out for a walk in the game, they often come back a little bit dirty, a bit smelly. You don't really want that walking around in your house. And so I thought a bathtub, so once the dog has been for a walk, you can just pop in there, have a bath, and then they're good but anyway besides the point as you can see i've now moved on into the next room which ends up being the lounge space so in here i decided to use these sofas which i believe are from peacemaker and then i decided to use the fireplace and tv well it looks like a, a picture frame but it actually ends up being a tv both of which are from the collaborations by hey harry and felix andre the fireplace itself is from the organic set and then the tv is part of their living room set so in here i just wanted it to feel as cozy as welcoming and just as as wholesome as I could possibly. Next to the kitchen, this is also a really big family room, and so I did come in and just clutter it up with loads of different picture frames and books and just little bits of bits and pieces. Again, right, right what is it, 114th reason why I love CC? We've got individual CC clutter of just portraits. We've just got a clutter kit. Why was that not included? Do you know what I mean? Like, these things, CC creators, they're players of the game. They play the game themselves. They decorate in the game themselves. They know what we need. And little tiny portraits like that, I end up using the portraits that I placed down onto the fireplace. I'm not joking, about 15, 20 different times in this build. But it's all right because it come in about 20 different swatches. And so I was able to change the faces in the portraits. That is something which just helps you feel a little bit more realistic it feels a little bit more just like an actual sims family are living in here because there is actual sims in these paintings instead of just having pears and apples and what's if one butterflies and a football team it just feels a little bit more like your sims actually live in this house but in here i decided to use this coffee table which is from the organic set like i said i use the organic set a lot in this build i use pretty much every single item that they have within that set in this build somewhere but i also end up placing down a little grand piano in the corner which i think this one is the new one that i've recently downloaded because previously i've only ever had one piano from like cc i mean to be honest they actually look very similar the only reason why i decided to go for this one is because this one is by Felix Andre and it's part of the Florence set and you will notice it kind of perfectly matches the door that's directly next to it and that's because Felix Andre also created them doors and so it just it just meshes well it's what I mean by I love CC creators just following their swatches from objects to objects and in this case the door is from the Berlin set but the piano is from the Florence set 
but the swatches match because they carried them over and it's just it's really helpful when it comes around to building but to be honest it does look very similar to the piano that i've already got but the only reason why i decided to go for this one is just because it just matched with the rest of the house a little bit better but also matches the fireplace you know a little bit of wood on top of the fireplace i've just noticed it matches that quite nicely as well didn't even mean to do that but it's just an extra added bonus but anyway as you can see i'm just moving over here and i've decided to actually clutter up these sofas with loads of different cushions and blankets I'm not gonna lie I originally placed them down and I was meant to do it initially but then I just got a bit distracted by the other bits of CC that I've got in my game and so then when I actually turned the camera to kind of like fill in the empty space behind these sofas I realised that they were looking very bare and so I came in and I cluttered them up with loads of different cushions and pillows what is, what is actually the difference? I was thinking this when I was building this because I've got CC of cushions and pillows but what is the difference between them? Because some of the CC that I've got, they're classed as pillows and some of them are classed them as cushions. But I don't, I just don't understand. Like, is there actually a difference or is it more so a case of tomato, tomato? You know, like where it's the same thing, but people say it differently or they have different words with it. Tomato, tomato is actually a really bad example because that's just more so your accent. But I can't think of anything else. But you know, there's certain words and like garbage, rubbish, like that kind of thing. Is it just one of them things or is it actually there is a difference between a cushion and a pillow? Either way, it was something that popped into my mind when I was furnishing this house because some CC is labelled as pillows and some is just, it's just cushions and so I had to type in both when I was cluttering up like armchairs and beds and stuff. But also I do want to mention because I feel like it's probably a really good time to mention it. The sofas work. If you're wondering if with all the different pillows and cushions, I'm saying both but I it's the same thing isn't it i think so anyway but if you're wondering if they still work it still works your sims will still sit on the sofa i've played this the whole entire house if you're not familiar with my channel which if you have been here for a while you've probably heard me say this so many times by now but i play test every single one of my houses and i didn't really run into any problems when it came around to play testing this house the only one problem that i run into which you haven't even seen me do because i actually did it off camera i placed down an exterior bin and then my sims just couldn't put any rubbish in the bin. But I actually realised it wasn't a me problem, it was a game's problem because there's a bug recently, there's a few different, actually there is many bugs in the Sims 4 currently, but there is a more recent bug where sims won't recognise if there's an outdoor bin. And I also find that sometimes it happens with laundries as well, like, you know, the washing machine or the tumble dryer, it will say, oh, there is no washing machine available on the lot when there is, it could be right next to your sim, but for some reason the game doesn't register it. The only one problem that I came into when it came around to place this build was I placed down an exterior outdoor bin, which you don't see me do because I did actually forget it when I was doing the garden, but then my sim just couldn't put anything into the bin, but yeah, everything works. The the, the big like sofas and all the different pillows on them completely work, your sims will sit on them, no problem whatsoever, but just behind the little sofa area, I ended up adding this bookcase, which the bookcase is by Charlie Pancase, and again, absolutely just love this new lighthouse collection. It came with also a little individual framed print, I don't know if you might have noticed it, I placed it down onto the fireplace, but it came with like a sofa, I think an armchair, the bookcases, but the amazing thing is about it, instead of just having the bookcase and then the books already being in it, it's more so a builder bookcase <laughs> build a bird but you know like build a bookcase so it's like the shelving unit and then you actually have the individual pieces of like the book clutters to place in it and the good thing about this is sometimes I might just want to go full ham and just have a really big like little personal library in my sims houses which I found out by the way recently and I'm going off subject here again but I actually found out recently you only need I think it's a thousand books in your house or in your apartment to have a personal library or it to be classed as a library. I thought that was quite interesting, but either way, if you do fancy having a sim that's got their own little personal library, you could just clutter up these shelving units with just tons of different books and just layer them upon one another. Or if you fancy it, you could just place down a few different pieces of book clutter and then you could also fit it in with maybe like photo frames or maybe bits of pottery and just maybe a few plants here and there. I think the actual shelf itself even without any books in it, I'm pretty sure works as a bookcase because when I was playtesting it, I was making sure everything works, of course, because, I mean, again, I've playtested this house, but I'm very particular when it comes around to playtesting. I literally will playtest everything, but I was playtesting whether the books work as an individual item or whether it was like the shelving unit, and I found that the actual shelving unit itself, despite there being nothing in it, would still work as a bookcase, which, it was just interesting. It was just, it's, it's just nice just to have that, but... Anyway, moving on besides the point, as you can see, I've now moved on into one of the first bedrooms. Now, I have just realised, up until this point, I have completely just failed to mention how I decorated this house in terms of 
all the different bedrooms and what age groups I decorate them to be for and also what kind of sims. So in case you are curious, I am going to move on into the bedrooms in literally a matter of minutes, but just before we pop on into them, if you're curious, I end up decorating the bedrooms to be one for a set of parents, one not for some grandparents or like a single grandparent, and there is also a kids room and then a teens room. The bedroom that you just see me do downstairs, I was personally imagining could be more so for like a single grandmother. Now, when it came round to furnishing the inside of this house, normally I like to have a little bit of a a little bit of a storyline, a little bit of just something to work off so I could kind of decorate the, the house to be suited to certain sims with a certain storyline, you know. They've got certain careers and they've got certain interests and hobbies and stuff. And then that way it can kind of help me build. But to be completely transparent with you, I didn't really have that when it came around to doing this build. I just wanted to build something cosy and wholesome and fun. And I also just wanted to build something with CC. I mean, to be fair, maybe a slight advantage of this is where it was more so just kind of like a generic house. You can pretty much have... I mean, you can have any kind of sims even in any of my builds. And I always say, if you want to download my builds and you want to change it and you want to alter it to do, you know, suit your sims, feel free to do so. But at least this way, it's a little bit more of a generic house. You know, it hasn't got any certain bits and pieces that I placed down because the sim that I imagine to live here is in a certain career or they've got a certain skill or they like to do something in their free time. At least this way, it's a little bit more generic. But yeah, I actually realised until I came round to furnish the actual individual bedrooms, I was thinking, hang on a minute. I don't actually know who I'm furnishing this for. And then I just made them wholesome and cutesy and just what I thought looked nice. And yeah, but anyway, getting back to talking about what I'm doing right now. So as you can see, I've now actually moved on to the upstairs portion of the house. And I started off by furnishing actually the hallway. But I did decide to cut the hallway out just because it looked quite similar to some of the other like hallway entry spaces within the build. And I just didn't want to make the video any any longer than what it needs to be. I mean, to be honest, you might be able to catch slight little glimpses of it as I kind of like spin the camera around in both the bathrooms and also the bedrooms because the upstairs portion of this house is quite, it's, it's quite, I don't want to say small, but it's, it's not exactly the biggest thing. So you can actually see the next room over. So you might be able to catch some certain glimpses of it, but I just, yeah, like I said, I didn't want to make the video unnecessarily long and it does end up being quite similar to some of the other hallway spaces within the build. And so I decided to cut it out, but like always, there will be some screenshots at the end of the video to show you how I decided to furnish it. But currently I'm just going around and I'm furnishing the upstairs bathroom. So in the bathroom, I decided to use I'm pretty sure the same bathtub that I used in the downstairs one, which is by Charlie Pancakes, and I believe it's from the soap set. And then in terms of the counters that I use in the kitchen, not the kitchen, <laughs> the counters that I use in the bathroom, I believe that they are from the country kitchen kit. That's why I said kitchen, because they're from the country kitchen kit, and they are by Harry. They are the same ones that I use in the downstairs laundry space. And then I just used a shower, which I believe is from the bath room it's like I'm, I'm trying to emphasize on the buff because it's like baf room from hey harry and felix andre and then i believe i just use a toilet from max 20. do you know what i realized i don't actually have that many cc showers and bathtubs in my game but i mean i say that i'm more so lacking in the shower cc department i've got i think like a handful of different bathtubs but in terms of cc showers i think i've only got maybe like three possibly four but one thing that i know that i am severely lacking in and if anyone's got any recommendations please let me know i haven't really got any cc for shower and bath combos i think i've got one but it's more of the you know, like the traditional old style classic kind of bath tub combo that's the only one that i've got and so if anyone knows of any like modern cc that is bath tub and shower please let me know because i'm definitely in the market for some new ones because i need to really update some of my bathroom items. I mean, I've got so many different CC packs at this point. I'm quite surprised that I haven't got more of them combos, but it is something that I have picked up on of late, especially when it comes around to doing my own personal like household because I was looking for one and I couldn't find one. So yeah, if you do have any recommendations, please let me know. But besides the point, as you can see, I've now moved on into one of the upstairs bedrooms. Now, this is the bedroom that I decorated to be for a little kid. And I was personally imagining like a little girl. So in here, I decided to use this bed, which I believe is from the Country Collection by Harry. And then I think the mattress that I put on top of it 
isn't meant to go with this bed but it kind of like blends in seamlessly i feel like you would think that the mattress is made for the bed because if you're not aware which i feel like a lot of people are probably aware of this by now but one thing what is this like the 115th reason why i love cc creators and cc work just in general so much but instead of just giving us like just a standalone bed cc creators a lot of the time will give us the bed frames and then the bed mattress like so you can like place it on because sometimes you might want a certain color wood but then you might want a certain color bedspread but then if the same object if them two things are like tied together it can be quite difficult but cc creators going back to it i this is one of the reasons why i love them all so much they give us them pieces individually so much better it's honestly it's so much more of a fun way to decorate bedrooms because you can really just make something however you want it to exactly be because the amount of times that i've come in and i've done builds and i want it to look a certain way and i wanted to use a certain bed because of the certain like bedspread color but i couldn't use it because the wood color didn't really match with the rest of the house and so then you have to end up using a different bed but cc creators like i said they also play the game they also build in the game they know what we need and it is just it's so fun whenever you do at cc bedrooms because you honestly have so many different customization options but the bread frame itself like i said it is by harry and then the mattress i think the one that i use is by piero sim and it's from the oak house collection and then because it was quite a i want to say like a higher headboard or like higher back to the actual initial bed itself i decided to merge in a cushion which i believe is from harry i'm not sure which collection it's from but i, I think it's from harry i basically merged in to the actual headboard itself to make it look a little bit more plush and a little bit more comfortable because i mean me personally i love a headboard that's got a little bit of cushion because if it's just like a wooden headboard i feel like it hurts my back or it hurts my neck or my head and so i like having a bit of a, a bit of a cushion or just chuck a pillow behind it sometimes and so i chucked a pillow onto the bed to make it a little bit more comfortable for the kid but also in that room that ends up being quite a big wardrobe it ends up being like a little bedside table an armchair and i placed down some more like pillows onto it also merged in a teddy bear i then also placed down a little toy box a teddy bear and also at the same desk that i use on the downstairs portion you know what i was talking about i always have this one favorite desk and it's by charlie pancakes i love it so much i use it twice in this house and so i used it in the little kids room as well i also placed on like a bunch of different like posters and polaroids and just bits and bobs that felt a little bit more kid like in that room but now as you can see i've now moved on into the next bedroom which is for a teenager quickly though i feel like i need to give a little bit of a disclaimer i don't know what's happened but it's like the the ovens have opened and it is absolutely chucking it down outside which i normally wouldn't mention when it's raining but i don't know if you can hear it it is so loud currently with the the rain is hitting my windows at such force it is creating such to be honest it might be nice ambience actually for the video but if you can hear something in the background don't know what happened it's just it's all of a sudden just started chucking it down rain and so if you can hear anything that is what it is like i said maybe it's just a nice bit of ambience but thought i'd mention it just in case you did start to hear a little bit of a, a difference in the background noise but yeah as you can see and like i just mentioned i've now moved on into the teenager's bedroom so in here I decided to use this bed which is fairly new in my game this is the first time i've actually placed it down into a build it's by felix andre and on the downstairs level when i was doing it, the grandma's bedroom i was really stuck on what bed to watch use for this bed on the downstairs i ended up settling on it was kind of like a, a cream brown one it's got these little like stripes in it i don't know if you would have noticed but in that room as well i placed down like a little ottoman which is by piero sim i think and it's from the cal calderon caldron set never know you say that one i placed down this little ottoman that is from that set and it just so happened that it had like a very similar stripe on the ottoman and then it kind of like matched with the bedspread it was just like a seamless thing that kind of looks like it was meant to happen like it was meant to be there but either way on the downstairs level when i was picking out the bed i noticed that this bed comes in so many lovely beautiful swatches and so i was having a bit of a hard time trying to pick out which one i was going to use but then i decided do you know what i'm just going to use the same bed on the upstairs level but i'll just change it to be a different color and so for the teenager's bedroom i decided to use it but it's kind of like this white bedspread and it's got these tiny little blue dainty flowers and they just look so so adorable and so i had to use it in that room i also end up placing down like a little like a little teddy bear or i think it's meant to be like a polar bear or something in between the pillows which again at the same it's the same kind of a scenario for the pillows on like the armchairs and the sofas downstairs i've play tested it and it doesn't interfere with your sims i was a little bit worried that your sims face might go into the teddy bear but i've play tested it and i can tell you with confidence that your sims are fine they don't even realize it's there it's just a nice little nod to the fact that it's a teenager but they 
still sleep with a, a stuffed animal. It's cute. I like it. It's cutesy. But also in that room, I end up placing down like a wardrobe, a little chest of drawers, a mirror, a few Polaroids in the wall. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on into the last room in this house, which is the parents' bedroom. So in here, I decided to use the same bed that I use in the kids' room. So it's by Piero Sim and it's from the Oak House collection, but it's the double bed version. Again, this is why I love CSA so much because I've got this same bed, but I've got it in double mattress form, single mattress form, and I think I might even potentially have it in like toddler bed form. It's just, if you wanted to, you could literally have the whole household having matching bedspreads. I don't know why you would, but in case you want to, the option is there. But either way, as well as that, I also end up placing down this bed frame, which is from uh, the Insomnia collection by Charlie Pancakes. Now, I'm pretty sure this is one of the first pieces of CC that I downloaded, which feels like forever ago. I'm pretty sure when I first started getting into CC properly, this is one of my first pieces that I downloaded. And still to this day, I use it consistently. Whether it be in CC builds that I show all to you guys, or whether it be in builds in my own personal gameplay, it's just such a good bed. And I use it in so many different builds, in so many different styles. But I end up placing down all these different like pillows into it, making it look a little bit more like cozy and comfortable. I also end up placing down like, quite a fairly long chest of drawers in this bedroom, as well as, I think it's classed as a, a love seat or a, a cuddle seat. Is that, it's basically, it's this armchair, but it's not big enough to be a two-seater sofa, but then it's also too big to be a single armchair, so it's a bit of a, a cuddle sofa or a cuddle seat, but either way, place that down to this bedroom as well, and then I also just go around, finish it off, add like a mirror and a few different photo frames, and then that is pretty much it. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this voiceover right here. As always, you can download this build of Why the Gallery. My gallery ID is JessicaPyYT, or just search for the hashtag JessicaPyYT, or just the hashtag JessicaPy. Now, I do want to remind you, as I am using CC in this build, you will need to click the Enable Custom Content tab onto the gallery so you can view this and download it into your game. But apart from that, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe, and hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedrunning video. Bye, guys.